A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those you know you, you you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Domino 
Kyrios Vobiscum. Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundo Matteo. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed seeds of all through the wheat and then went off. Sowed weeds of all, all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said to the prophet I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, he who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out his kingdom and all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. Verbum Domini. Today, we hear themes of God's mercy, his restraint, his forbearance with us. The first reading from the Book of Wisdom, we're told, you have the care of all. You have not unjustly condemned. That God is caring for us. He's guiding this world to his heavenly Father, where he is all in all, the transformation at the end of time. And he's not unjustly condemned us and this guiding us. He's bringing us along, right? Trying to give us the gifts of his Holy Spirit in the new covenant. He sees the heart, right? He knows us. We're told in the book of wisdom, your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. That God is in control, that he is the creator, he sustains creation, that he's always at work. He's using everything in our lives to draw us closer to him and to help others, you know, to, to, to be, for everyone to be part of his providential plan. With much lenience, you govern us. You gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. That God is kind and just, that he gives us hope, right? Through, he leaves room for sinners to convert, for repentance, right? He's, 
He waits on us. He's merciful towards us. You know, if we think of the sacrament of reconciliation, you know, the priest there in the confessional waiting, right, waiting. It's a beautiful image of the Father always waiting for us to return to him. That he's giving us grace, allowing us freedom to draw us uh, to himself. We learn, I think, in that participating, going to confession, to have patience and mercy towards others because we've received it, right? God is waiting on us and we can give other people a little room for conversion, right, for repentance. He calls us with love, right? He gives us freedom to respond with him and he's patient with us. And this patience, God's patience is mercy itself, right? It, it makes victory possible, right? Gives his grace room to work where all would be destroyed on account of our sins, uh, God's patience with us calls us to himself. And again, we see these themes in the gospel today. He tells us that the kingdom, in the kingdom, that Jesus, you know, he preaches the kingdom of God, and this is his uh, dominion uh, over the world. His, uh, his kingdom is, we could say, God himself, his lordship over us. We live out in this kingdom through our discipleship, following him, living in communion, friendship with him, belonging to him, right? So he's calling us to that gathering around himself, so to speak. And today about the kingdom, he highlights some important points. First is that it, it starts small, right? It has meager dimensions within history. It starts small, but it ends big, it ends big, right? Jesus comes again in glory to transform the world. So there's this coming consummation. This fulfillment is realized beyond history through the eschatological judgment, the catechism says. It says the kingdom will be fulfilled then not by a historic triumph of the church through a progressive ascendancy, but only by God's victory over the final unleashing of evil. And sometimes we can want to be, look at the church as some corporation that gets stronger and stronger and more powerful, but that's not what Jesus is telling us about the kingdom. There's this, you know, he describes it as a mustard seed, this tiny seed, yet produces a large bush, or the leaven in the dough that has a big effect on the dough, right, causing it to rise. That there's this coming consummation at the end of time. Jesus in, comes in judgment, he separates the weeds from the wheat, the sheep from the goats. And this is his final victory over evil. And that's how victory is won, through that judgment. John Paul II said that God alone separates the subjects of the kingdom from the subjects of the evil one. And this judgment will take place, you know, at the end of time. So they grow together, right? We are, we are together on this earth waiting for that judgment. You know, it's interesting, it, you know, we use these parables for the kingdom, describing it as seeds. And not only as seeds, but as the smallest of seeds, or leaven in the dough. This, they're small, they're negligible, right? We have, uh, you know, you think of like anyone that has a, maybe a hobby garden or something. You got all these seeds that can produce great fruit, right? The seeds aren't that value, that valuable in themselves. You know, it's missed in history, right? We could say the kingdom is so meager, oftentimes overlooked by a secular world. And we think of even at the time of Christ, his healings, right? In comparison, you know, with the historical and political realities of the day, right? They were conquered and ruled by Rome. And Jesus is working some miracles and some healings, but you have this incredibly oppressive government that ran out of wood and all the crucifixions that were taking place, you know, in Jerusalem at that time, being taxed to death, right, and having their faith suppressed to some degree. <coughs> and Jesus is working <clears throat> a few miracles, right? <clears throat> He's not throwing out the Romans. But uh, this, it's present in history in a very real way. The power of that Paschal mystery is present. People are being converted. The communio of the church is being formed. We see that at Pentecost, right? 3,000 people converted. And that real body of Christ is being formed where they're 
they're sharing everything in common, they're pouring their lives into one another. It doesn't have great structures to it, but it's real, right? That fellowship and that kingdom is real. Pope Benedict, Emeritus Benedict said, we are in the sowing season. The word of God seems only a word, almost nothing. But take care, courage, this word contains life. It bears fruit. There is a coming fulfillment. Jesus will present a transformed world to his heavenly Father. Now is the time for sowing and growing, and that he rules not through worldly power, but through love, through hiddenness and lowliness, right? He wants the sinner to be converted, always calling us to himself. And he warns us today, right, if we pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them, that we might be mistaken in our, in our judgment, right? We can't judge the heart. We can't judge how God's grace is working in that person, his freedom to correspond with that. You know, it might happen at the end of his life, right? If we are harsh with him now, it might prevent that from taking place. The weeds and the wheat grow together, in our own hearts even. Right, that we can struggle with sin, and certainly in our brothers and sisters. And even though you know, the church is holy, it's a real but imperfect holiness. Jesus draws us to himself. He clutches us to himself, we could say. We could see that radiance of his grace and his friendship and the Blessed Mother and the saints. And in the means of holiness, the preaching of the gospel, the sacraments, but yet we know he's clutching sinners to himself. So it's a real holiness, but it's imperfect because the church is made up of sinners right on the way, repenting. So that's the presence too, I think, of the weeds and the wheat. Now this is not to indulge evil in any way, right? We're not just supposed to completely ignore it, but we, we battle evil, we fight for justice, right? We correct error, we try to help especially the innocent, those who are being led astray by evildoers. And in this culture and age, there's no shortage of people, right? One of the church documents on this current age said that secularism is by nature and definition a movement of ideas and behavior which advocates a humanism totally without God, completely centered upon the cult of action and production, and caught up in the heady enthusiasm of consumerism and pleasure seeking unconcerned with the danger of losing one's soul. I thought that was a pretty good and tight definition of our, of our culture, right? Exaltation of the self, that's real. Many people are being led astray, going a different way. You know, so we have to be present to work against that, to be salt and light in this world. <clears throat> but I was, I took courage by a, a quote by Pope Francis in his document, The Joy of the Gospel. He says that the parable of the weeds among the wheat graphically illustrates an important aspect of evangelization. The enemy can intrude upon the kingdom and so harm, but ultimately he is, defend he is defeated by the goodness of the wheat. He is defeated by that goodness, that love is stronger than death, that love conquers sin, and that we are to grow and to focus on what the Lord has given us to do. Every day, as the disciples who are seeking communion with him, we're called to seek his will, to do what he puts in front of us, to be faithful to those tasks, to that vocation, to our state in life that he's given us. And that radiance, right, converts. That radiates the very mercy of God. We're called to that fidelity, not looking towards uh, or looking for success, but looking for God's work and faith, right, that the kingdom is growing.